today we celebrate that he's a risen God, that he's alive. You may say, well, it doesn't look like he is. Well, he is. Because he's in this place. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place today. We thank you for it. We thank you that you're working through the whole service today and that, Lord, you would prick our hearts. You would change our hearts. You may say, why, why am I even on the earth? Because God has a plan for each one of us. And he wants you to be a part of that plan. He died for that. So that we could have a part of that plan and be free. Free in our minds. Free in our bodies. To have healing. To have good relationships with our families. And peace in our minds. So we thank you for that today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So glad to have everybody out today. So glad it's not snowing today. Aren't you glad? Aren't you grateful? That Easter's are bundled up, and it's, we're not bundled up today. We're blessed, right? Amen. Might be bundled up tomorrow, but not today. <laughs> hey, let's go and stand for the reading of the Word of God as we start off for a moment and pray today. As we pray over this, you've been sitting for a few minutes. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your Word. We thank you, Lord, that your Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light in our path. We thank you, Father God, that the Bible is real to me. Jesus is real to me. We thank you, Father God, that your word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, we pray that today we're going to be taught and instructed, and we're never going to be the same in the name of Jesus. We glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. You may be seated. All right, everybody. Well, I believe you're not here on accident. The Lord has directed you. You might have been invited, so you're not here by accident, by the invitation, right? And you came. So, and, you know, God is doing great things for you in your life. When you take a step closer to Jesus... He takes a step closer to you. I always start off with a couple stories to start off the day and even thinking about Easter time. I love I love the Easter time. I love the spring. How many in Buffalo love the spring? Some people love the winter. we got guys over here that wear shorts all year round. Of course, most Buffalonians always have shorts on, ready to go. And so, however, you know, I love the spring. You see the flowers come up. It's a refreshing start of the new season. You know, as a kid, you know, we would get dressed up to go to church and uh, have to behave extra good. We try to, and so my brother would egg me on, my sister as well egg me on, but she's a lot younger than me, and so we, I was always at the, the culprit, my brother and my, myself all the time. And so we had such a great time coming to church just to, just to really have a freshness and a lightness. And you know what? Uh, part of that freshness and lightness is Jesus. That's the big part, amen? He's the big reason. He, we wouldn't have the earth without Jesus. He created the earth. We wouldn't have the flowers without him. Aren't you grateful for flowers? I love to have the fresh flowers. I may not wear one. I may not wear a pattern of flowers, and I never will. I'll only carry a floral pattern, something if it's my wife's, but I'll carry it real quick and look manly, but just like uncertainly. Just carry it just real, real staunch, you know. Just have a real purpose about it, and then drop it off and leave like you meant to. And Amen. And so thank God that, that God is good. I love it when hearing these stories about kids, kids' church and stuff like that. One, uh, one little girl is asked to come up at her kids' church. And asked to uh, recite the 23rd Psalm. She's like, oh yeah, I know it. I know it. And she comes up and says, the Lord is my shepherd. That's all I want. Sat down. And she, she went ahead and sat down. Many you know there's a lot of other verses in the 23rd Psalm. And, but, that's, but that sums it up. The Lord is my shepherd. I, sh I don't want anything else. That's all I want. Jesus is all I want. And so I love that. And I, I know I love another one. It's always fun to laugh. I love to laugh. Anybody knows me. And uh, better than crying. Amen. And so, uh, hey, there's this one little guy named Johnny. He, uh, he was in children's church. And uh, what happened is he, they were talking about the story in Genesis of creation that day. And about how, you know, God made Adam and Eve. And so Adam was made first, as we know, or may not know. That's news to you, Genesis. You look in Genesis. And so Adam was made, mankind, amen. It wasn't made from a test tube or anything else. He was made, <laughs> Jesus made him. And so he was made, and then all of a sudden he says, hey, from, and from, uh, from Adam's side, he's put in a deep sleep. And from Adam's side, he took out one of Adam's ribs and made Eve. Pretty amazing. And so Johnny's like, oh, my gosh, this is, he was kind of awe about this, thinking, wow, there's a woman made, this wife was made from Adam's rib? You know, he's thinking, trying to compute real life. How did this happen? This is kind of freaky. I don't know what happened. And uh, so he gets, gets home later that day. He goes to take a nap. He starts to lay down. He's like starting to not feel good. His side starts to ache. 
and then he starts to feel sick. His mom comes over an hour and a half later and says, little Johnny, what's, what's going on? Are you okay? He says, no, I don't feel too good. I think my side hurts. I think that God's going to make a wife for me. <laughs> no, Johnny, God's not going to make a wife for you out of your rib. That's not what the Lord does today. He already created a man and a woman, and that's not how it happens, son. And so, hey, uh, you know, leave it to kids to always say and do something fun. Amen. We are just in Christian Central Academy this year speaking, or this week speaking. I was speaking to the, the elementary kids, and they sing so loud. They know the songs and all the motions to get up and sit down. We were talking about this Friday. You know, to say, up from the grave, Jesus rose. You know, I just kind of watched them to follow along with them. You know, all the motions. This is the chapel service they have at uh, Brayden Williamsville School that I graduated from, from high school. And uh, these kids have their chapel, and they're all singing super loud, like as loud as you can possibly sing. And I'm like, this is great. I said, we're going to have all you guys come and sing, all 200 of you guys, not quite the Vienna Boys Choir, but the CCA Girls and Boys Choir, come and sing for us at church this week and wake us all up. And so it's amazing. I love the enthusiasm with kids. Uh, God loves kids. You know, we don't need to lose our enthusiasm. You know, we, we can choose to get enthusiastic about the things of God. Get enthusiastic with life. Amen. It, it's, it's a choice to be enthusiastic. It's a choice to be a grump, you know. Oscar, Oscar the Grouch stayed in that trash can. Let him out. <laughs> hey, we're going to have a good service today. Uh, so I'm just going to go through some things. We're just going to talk about Jesus in our day. How about that? Jesus in our day. You know, we know, you know, many times at Easter time we think of the history. It's like Good Friday. You see the history, the stations of the cross. We, rec we remember Jesus and what he did for us. Amen. We're so grateful. Yes. So grateful that we can have eternity with him upon our choice. And then we think of the resurrection, talking about this today. But what about Jesus in our day today? The Lord's not, churches are not a place of a museum to hear a recited history of what happened, a history lesson. I love history. You know, I love that. But you know what? I love reality. I love what Jesus is real. Amen. He's real to us. You might have felt something different today. Well, that's the presence of God. The heat wasn't just turned up. All right. It's the presence of God. God is real. And I love as a kid, little Catholic boy, you know, I would go have to go, you know, on Mary's, Sister Mary's day or Mother Mary's day, I'd have to go take uh, roses from the uh, the nun's garden because I never got someone. I'd, I'd always forget as a kid, don't do this at home, guys. And so take them, So I, my friend was like, hey, there's some roses over here. You're supposed to bring them on this certain day to class. And I was like, oops, I forgot. And so I followed him and, you know, the Lord forgave. Guess what? The roses grew back. And so... Uh, but I know as a kid, the, just something different, that being around the presence of God, that being around people that knew the Lord made such an impact. So in every denomination, those that serve and follow the Lord, amen, those are people that know Jesus. But we all individually have a choice. And so the presence of God always drew me. The goodness of God always drew me. And so we're going to look through here uh, just some books of the Bible talking about declaring who Jesus is. And so we have some pictures here scrolling through. That's the Bible, in case you haven't seen one. You could also have a Bible on your iPad, iPhone. I do as well. And so this is the Bible. And so just going to scroll through, through, through some pictures of Jesus. Amen. I love the picture of who Jesus is. He's the magnificent king. Amen. He is the, he's full of joy. He's full of love. He's full of, he loves children. He's coming again in the clouds again one day. And so thank you, Lord, that the Lord is great. He's mighty. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. It says in the book of Matthew, and this talks about every single book in the Bible declares Jesus as Lord, declares different attributes of who the Lord is. We just went through the Old Testament of who Jesus is. Uh, in the Old Testament, magnified and prophesied to us on Good Friday. And today we're talking about who he is in the New Testament. And you can scroll through if you like to just scroll through. Just go through those quick while I'm reading this. You can scroll through those again. Thank you, Miss Iris. And even back through the original ones. So Matthew, um, in the book of Matthew, in the Bible, the Gospels, that's the New Testament, Jesus is the Messiah who is a servant. The book of Mark, the, the, Jesus is the Messiah who is a servant. Again, hey, I got it twice. And so there's something different on that one. I copied it twice. It was late last night finishing that. So also Luke, he's the deliverer. John, he is the Messiah who is God in the flesh. Hallelujah. God in the flesh. He did, he, this wasn't just a story made up. Jesus is God in the flesh. He came and he died. He lived for us in the flesh. He died in the flesh and rose again in the spirit. Acts, in the book of Acts, the spirit who dwells in his people. He is the spirit who dwells in his people. Romans, the righteousness of God. He made us righteous. We can't by our own good works make ourselves righteous. 
we can't just have a whole bunch of, you did the right thing, you crossed all the T's, dotted all the I's, did it all perfect. You can't make yourself perfect. So many religions try to say, you need to do all this just to go ahead and get to know Jesus or just to get into heaven. No, it's Jesus made us righteous. We have to accept that free gift. First Corinthians is the power of the love of God. There's no other love than the love of Jesus. Second Corinthians, he is the down payment of what's to come. Wow. Galatians, he is our very own life. Ephesians, the unity of our church. Mm -hmm. Philippians, he is the joy of our life. Isn't that good? All these things, they aren't negative. They aren't bad. It's amazing. The true joy is in Jesus. He's the joy of our life. Yeah. You know, we might have a temporary happiness. You know, you might have got a big popcorn, going to see the Muppets in the movie theater or something like that. That's happy time, right? I remember a story that we were with our, our some of our friends, the associate pastors in Tulsa. We went to see a movie. One of the, I don't know if it was a Mission Impossible movie or something. But I'm carrying popcorn up to the top row. He's sitting in the back row. A friend of mine, Pastor Jerry, is on our board. And he's sitting on the back wall. And so I, I go up and... I have a big Diet Coke in my hands or something, and then I've got also a big thing of popcorn. Of course, they load it up, and there's a lot of butter on the top of it, too. And so I go, and I start I start to lose the Diet Coke as I'm going to walk past them, and I'm like, then I start to lose the popcorn. I'm like, what? what's the worst of the two that I lose? The Diet Coke on the lady in the front of me or the popcorn on Pastor Jerry? So Pastor Jerry got picked, and whoops, Pastor Jerry... Steady my hands of that. He had popcorn from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Talking about buttering somebody up. I buttered him up so good. He was covered with butter. He's like, Jill, Jill, get some tissues. There's butter running down my back. Tell you what, he never, never is the same. Good thing he had a yellow shirt on. He had to throw his shirt out. It died. It, it stained that puppy real good life. So, hey, he smelled good. He always smelled like the theater from that day on. And so, you know, the joy, the Lord is the joy of our life. Amen. You can make joy. There might be temporary happiness and laughter, and there was a lot of laughter that day, no doubt about it. After the fact. I don't know if you remember the movie, but he remembered all the popcorn. In Colossians, Jesus, he says, you better not get near me with that. In Colossians, Jesus holds us, he holds the supreme position in all things. First Thessalonians, and our comfort in the last days. Second Thessalonians, our returning king. Let me tell you, we're in the last days, folks. Welcome aboard. You know, and he's the comfort in the last days. People might try to feel, feel comforted by Jack Daniels. Well, Jack's not a good comfort. They might feel comforted by going to a stream to, to do something, to fish or to float down the lazy stream. You know, I love that too. But you know what? The comfort comes from the Holy Spirit. The comfort comes from Jesus. Amen. Second Thessalonians, our returning king. Jesus is coming back. Like we have the picture here. He's coming back for you and for me. First Timothy, he's the savior of the worst sinners. The Apostle Paul, he was the greatest candidate. He was killing Christians, and he thought he was doing the Lord's work. And guess what happened? The Lord appeared to him, and he turned around to come to Jesus. So if you think you're bad to the bone, guess what? Jesus got your number. You know, he's got your number. He knows where you live, and it doesn't matter what you did. You know, you're not on a merit. Jesus, most top ten list, most wanted in heaven, says, this guy's not going, that guy's not going. Can you believe what they did? No, there's no one that's too bad. Jesus saved, died for us all. Amen. Yeah. But you have to receive that free gift. Second Timothy, he's the leader of leaders. Jesus is the leader of leaders. There might be leaders in the earth today, but Jesus is the ultimate leader of leaders. And we'll find out one day, right? So Titus, foundation of truth. Philemon, he's our mediator. These again are books of the Bible. Hebrews, our high priest. There's only 78 more books. Hang, hang patient. I'm just getting a few more. James, he matures our faith. First Peter, our hope in times of suffering. So thank God that when we suffer, there's difficulties that people go through. He is our hope. Aren't you grateful? Second Peter, the one who guards us from false teaching. So there's a lot of falseness in the world. God wants to guard you from that. First John, source of all fellowship. So the true fellowship is in Jesus. He is the one. He's, the Bible says that we, we come to Jesus, we fellowship one with another. We fellowship with the Father, the God, the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And they fellowship with us. They come to make their home with us. And so that when we gather together as Christians, that there's a common fellowship that we have one with another, that it feels like you fit with a hand in the glove. Amen? Yeah. That it's like you are, it's good to be together. Yeah. Amen. And it also says in 2 John, God in the flesh. Jesus came as God in the flesh. 3 John, source of all truth. Jesus is the source of all truth. There's no fake news with Jesus. He's the real news, baby. He's got the right thing. Amen for you. 
There's no falseness. Every single page in this Bible is 100% truth. If you ever want to know the news, what's going on in the world, there's a lot prophesied of what's coming, what's happening, what's going on in the earth. Is it all doom and gloom? Well, there might be some doom and gloom for people that don't know him, but there's joy and peace and strength in the Holy Ghost when you know Jesus. Amen? He's got strength for you in this day, in this hour. You might feel like things are bad or things are good. It doesn't matter. When we know Jesus, all is good. Yeah. Third John, he's the source of all truth. Jude, he protects us from stumbling. Aren't you grateful for that? Yeah. Some people need extra extra protection from stumbling, right? Someone fell in it. Pastor Joel fell <laughs> face long in the, into the snow a couple weeks ago. As we were coming to get ready, Krista was going to pick her up. She comes down the steps, and I, I could see it happening right in my, my eyes. She comes down the steps. Just does a wipe out, plants, just did it. Was it a face plant? I think face planted right in the snow. That wasn't the time for snow angels, okay? You do that backwards, you know, in the snow when you have like a snow suit on. And so, but you recovered. And I'm glad you landed in the snow instead yeah. of cement. So, but it was that, that day we're like, oh, there's not much snow, maybe two inches. We had like a foot of snow in the, the thing. And so, but she made it and dried off. So Revelation, Jesus is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the coming again King and the one who was and makes all things new. Thank you, Jesus. He makes all things new. Amen. So let me tell you what. There's a, a great thing that's happening in the world today. It's Jesus is being ministered to people today. There might be a, a bad narrative in the world of things coming against uh, all kinds of craziness that's said of what's right or what's not right or confusion and to declare that... Uh, and the persecution really coming against kids. A lot of things yeah. coming against kids in this day, and that's our heart goes out to kids. But Jesus is big, and yeah. he protects your kids and protects our kids. Amen? Amen? And so God will keep them safe. But what's coming is a great reviving of church, a great reviving of people. Yeah. So as much as there's bad news coming out, guess what? There's such a great news that Jesus is the Lord. Yeah. Back in uh, 1969, uh, Billy Graham, anybody hear of Billy Graham? He was like one of the greatest evangelists of all time. Uh, he would go and minister. Uh, just a wonderful, wonderful ministry. He's really one of the ones that has ministered to probably the most people on the earth. Millions of people he's ministered to. And he actually had a, a time of like over a million people at one time he was ministering to, I think, in South Korea. But he went to uh, Madison Square Gardens in New York City in 1969, and they held a crusade for, for actually 10 days, and 240,000 people came to, to church to hear Jesus, to hear about the Lord. 10,000 people gave their hearts to the Lord that day. They're over the course of those 10 days. Amazing. Then again, in 1991, he went to Central Park, open air meeting, to preach the Lord to people. And 250,000 people came to Central Park to hear the good news. That Jesus is Lord. He's got a great plan, not a bad plan for your life. So God is doing great things. So in Buffalo, we see and declare that, that there's going to be the good news. Stadiums opened up. The new Bills Stadium, welcome aboard for Jesus. Amen. You can play, but hey, Friday night, we'll come preach, right? And so... There's good stuff that's happening in the world. People yeah. are coming to Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. By the droves. Amen. We saw it in the, actually some kids. We heard reports in the, some of the, uh, the colleges. Yeah. They're like baptizing kids in the water fountains by the hundreds. Yeah. And it's just amazing seeing people, kids get on fire for God. You know, they don't have to get on fire for, for, uh, for drugs and for craziness and to live their life way off the deep end. No, they come to the Lord and get baptized. And there's a new freshness and purpose for life. And that's Jesus is the purpose of our life. And so we're going to talk about the power of the resurrection. This is all about Easter Sunday. I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. You can listen along. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. He is risen. Thank God that he's risen. He didn't just die in the grave and left there. No. But he's alive. Jesus is alive inside of me. He's alive inside of you if you know him. And you can't have him alive inside of you today. Hallelujah. It says in Matthew 28 verse 1. I'll read it to you. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone with the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guard shook for fear of him and became like dead men. That's so awesome. So it wasn't just a little thing that happened. It wasn't a quiet thing like, let me carefully move the stone. Let me do a sneaky, sneaky to pull Jesus out of the tomb. You know, no. It wasn't Inspector Clouseau coming. No, it was a mighty angel that came down. A mighty lightning. It was like lightning that come down. It was the, the angel was like the countenance of lightning. Let me tell you what, angels are real. Angels are here today in the earth today working and moving on our behalf. Amen. And so as surely 
just such a great fear came upon the guards, and they were like dead men. I think if you saw an angel look like the countenance of lightning, you'd be dead like a dead man too, right? And so, but the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who is crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And he said, Come and see the place where the Lord lay. And so quickly, and, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee, and there you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went and quickly, out quickly from the tomb, with fear and great joy, and ran to bring his disciples' word. Amazing. So amazing. Just to picture that. The disciples fell over like dead men. But the, the, the women came and they saw. And they said, hey, show, let me show you where the place where the Lord lay. He's not here. He's gone. He's gone. He's been resurrected. He's alive. He's alive and he's walking around. But they said, go and tell the disciples. Go and tell them. And so what happened next? And so the women worshiped the risen Lord. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, rejoice. He had not gone to heaven yet, but he rose up from the dead. Amen. He rose up from hell. He went to hell for three days for us to pay the price so we wouldn't have to pay that. Aren't you grateful? You don't have to pay the penalty for your sins. Jesus came. This is the whole reason in the book of the Old Testament that declared that Jesus is coming to pay the price for you and for me. And this is the free gift that he gives to all people. There's not a mystery about it. There's not a wondering about it. It's connecting with what Jesus did for us to simply say yes to Jesus. And when we do... He could tell you, he could say to you, rejoice. He said to Mary and the children, to the other women, he said, rejoice. And so they came and told him, tried to help him by the feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee and there you will see me. So amazing. Let's skip down to verse 16. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain, which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I am commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always and even to the end of the age. And so it says in other uh, books of the Bible, other Gospels, it talks about how it appeared to 500 people. Over the course of days, many days, the Lord came and he t appeared to his disciples to tell them about, about him and about how he's going to heaven and about to wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit to come and to help you, to be your strengthener. And I think we have some pictures as well. Miss Iris just about, we probably went through them already, but Jerusalem. And so Jerusalem is a real deal. This is really, as we know, there's a lot of news about Israel, the war in Israel. That's the weeping wall where they, people come and they pray. And this is the Dome of the Rock. That's actually a Muslim uh, place, uh, Muslim place. But this is also, this is the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, which, which is said the place where Jesus was buried. They built a church on top of it. And this is also more of Jerusalem. Just such amazing historical place, just to see the, the reality of Jesus. And this is the Via Della Rosa where Jesus carried his cross to go to Golgotha. Thank you, Jesus, for that. And that's the Garden of Gethsemane. And I think we might have one of the one. And so just some pictures of Jerusalem, pictures of Israel. And that what an amazing historical place to say that Jesus came. He came, he rose again, and but he empowers us to live our life for him. Amen. He wants us to walk with him. He wants us to talk with him. He is alive. So what's, what's Jesus doing in our day today? What's the result of that resurrection? Yeah. It's when we come and we connect with him. So people, people come. That's why we preach. That's why you have Jesus in you when you know him. And you share the good news with other people. So we have to make a decision. But number one, I want to tell you today that we've been translated. We've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his love of his son. So what does that mean? You know, we were born in darkness. We were born in not having a Savior. We were born in our sins. But Jesus came and paid the price for us. Colossians 1, 13, 14 says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness, conveyed us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. It's through Jesus' blood. There's no other way to go to heaven. No other way by which we come to him. And so basically you're a person. You're born in the world just like a person in darkness. But you have to come to the light. You have to receive Jesus. And then what happens when you say yes to him, you, with your heart, you to make a purposeful, rightful place to say, I'm going to choose to walk with you every day. He takes you out of that place of darkness and sets you in the place of light. He makes you a new creation. He puts his heart inside you, yeah. and he puts a new spirit in you that's alive that only he can do. You can't buy a spirit. You can't rent a spirit. No, he puts the spirit in you that goes to live forever. Yeah. Our time on earth is such a little glimpse of, of, of life. I'm going to be 50 this year. It's hard to believe. 
it's hard to believe. Jesus help me, you know, and so we do as much as we can to stay as young as we can, strong as we can. That's what the Lord wants, amen? No, no Botox, no collagen, no plastic surgery for me. Just more, uh, more vitamins and working out, amen? And so thank God that the life of God keeps us young. The life of God keeps us alive. The life of God gives us purpose to live. The life of God gives us a focus to live. I know that when I received Jesus at seven years old, I wasn't in any biker gang or hell's angels like I always say, amen? But I didn't have a play, chance to mess up too bad, right? Some pranks, a lot of pranks and mischievousness over my life, of course. But however, what happened is that I, when I prayed to receive the Lord, I felt the tangible love of Jesus yeah. come into my life. And I knew a distinct difference in my life. In my, yeah. A huge difference in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, the, I'll tell you what, when you connect with Jesus, he'll, he'll, you'll choke up. We yeah. prayed with a guy a couple weeks ago. That he was, uh, he was, he's like in his 80s, right? Yeah. And I knew he didn't know the Lord. He's like, you know, I talked to the Lord. We talked to him for years, right? We talked to him for years and just about the Lord and about things. He actually, he'd always talk to me. He says, you know, I talk to Jesus every day. He's like, I didn't come to talk to you about Jesus, really. I came to give you some cookies. But hey, if you want to talk to me, go ahead and, go ahead and talk to me. I'll give you a cookie, you know? You want a cookie? And so, because we're always like baking stuff, bringing stuff around to people. And so um, when we did that, uh, I just felt, hey, we need to go talk to him. He's going to have surgery, heart surgery. And so we were talking to him, and he, he, I said, hey, you know, so-and-so, let's go ahead and, if you, do you feel, let's pray, receive Jesus. Let's just pray so you can know and have peace in your heart that what if you died, you know, someday, we expect you're going to live a long life, amen. You want to live a long life. You've already lived a long life, but you can choose to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, amen. And so he's like, keeps on getting away from the subject, keeps getting away from the subject. And so I just say, hey, let's go ahead and pray right now. Let's go ahead and pray right now. Let's go ahead and pray right now. Bill, let's go ahead and pray right now. Let's say yes to Jesus right now. Let's go ahead and do this. So I keep circling it back around. And so finally, he, he said, let's, okay, let's go ahead and pray. And so he did. Thank you, Lord, that you prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, because he died. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. What a good guy. What an amazing guy, what a fun guy, and uh, what an amazing gentleman. And so, but he is always full of joy. We love, we loved him. But we know that we're going to see him again someday. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And so the Lord wants to see you in heaven too. Amen. So you have to make that choice. Yeah. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. That's why he came. That's why he rose for you, amen, for you and for me. So thank God that we love you. How many of you know love the light and, and the sunlight in Buffalo? I love the sunlight in Buffalo probably more than anybody, you know. <laughs> you know, we I lived in Oklahoma for 16 years. You guys live, you know, you live in Louisiana from Louisiana and uh, where there's more sunlight than a mosquito can get his hands on, you know. And so we, I love, I don't know where that came from, but it sounds good, you know. There's a lot of mosquitoes because there's a lot of humidity down there in, in Louisiana. And so when I lived in Oklahoma, it would be like 110 degrees, but I loved the sunshine. It was like, three, it was like 320 days a year. It was sunny. I loved it. I love it. And so when I come up here and I'm like, well, thank you, Lord. You've called me. I've got grace to be here. I was born here. And so when we're here that we love the sunlight, I'm like moving my plants to the sunlight. And the sun is it kind of moves along in the day and like moving them, moving in my little palm trees I'm growing inside because you can't grow them outside most of the year. And then I'm like going to stand in the sunlight on my breaks at work and stuff like that. I'm like, I need as much vitamin D as I can get. Amen. And so the, we're drawn to the sunlight. We're drawn to the light. Jesus said he is the light of the world. Amen. He is the light of the world. He says, the Bible says in John 1, 4, in him was life and the life was the light of men. His life is your light. His life lights us up. Amen. Hallelujah. And so the, there's a light and his name is Jesus. He came to give you life and light on the inside of your life. And so there's a reason why you're drawn to the light. You're not drawn to the darkness. You're not drawn to the those people that would want to kind of just be inside, away from everything. It's because the devil's trying to get you to just focus on your own self, trying to focus you on the darkness, trying to say you can't come to the light, you can't receive the light, but Jesus says receive the light. He's light. Amen. So he doesn't want you to stay in the darkness. When you take a step toward him, all you've got to do is take a step toward him and say yes to him. And all we do daily, if you start to experience the darkness, you feel the de maybe depression, you start to watch the news too long, turn that junk off and put the, put the good news on, put some good teaching on or something that's going to encourage you, amen? And so choose the light. 
We choose to focus on the light. When we focus on the light, Jesus brings us to him. Amen. And when we come to him, his light comes in the inside of us. And we are totally turned around. But every single day, I've got to choose Jesus. Yeah. Not, I don't have to get saved every day and receive him every day. But no, I have to choose what I think about. Yeah. I have to choose where I'm going. I made the decision to come to church today. It's a yeah. good thing because she would have said, where are you at? <laughs> I'm at Starbucks, but I'll be there shortly. Amen. So, however, you know, the Lord wants us to choose him. Yeah. He chose us. Yeah. He chose you and me. Yeah. He died a terrible death. By the worst executioners, the filthy animal Romans, they executed him, but he gave up his life. He didn't he didn't he didn't wasn't just taken by surprise, but he gave his life up for you and me. And so you know what? Also in the creation in what is around us in the earth, you know, we love being out in the out, out in the great outdoors. I love it as soon as it gets nice to be in the great outdoors, I love it. But it says that all creation is the handiwork of God. Yeah. It was made and created for mankind. Man, and the narrative that's spun around is that, uh, that we're subject to, to creation. No, Jesus says, he says, I give you dominion over the, all the works of your hands. I give you dominion over the whole earth. You go and you do it and bear with it and make it what you want. So, no, we're not to worship Mother Earth. Mother, the earth is made for us. Yeah. Amen. We worship Jesus. We worship the Creator. So everything cries out. The creation cries out just attributes of who Jesus is. Yeah. The streams, the sunshine, the rocks, the fish, the turkeys, the gobble gobble, the deers, everything else out there. It, it, it declares that Jesus has made these things. Amen. He made it for you and for me. Thank God for Black Angus say steaks. Amen. Hallelujah. We, love, we get the best of them in Oklahoma. Amen. It's, that's exactly right. I went to Amarillo, Texas one time on the panhandle of Texas where they had uh, the big Texan restaurant. It's, of course, everything's big in Texas. It could be just like the big omelet, the big Texan, the big steak place, the big everything. But they had the 72-ounce steak. You had to eat, if you ate it an hour, you get it for free. I can't much less do maybe a 28-ouncer, much less a 76-ouncer. Tyler would try it. You, you'd try it. Yeah, he's shaking his head just kind of cautiously. You don't have to have it today, okay? This isn't, you're not getting signed up. And so I, when I was there, one guy actually attempted it. You know, he knew he wasn't going to finish it, so he wasn't like really serious like a man versus food type guy. You know, but he, he sat there and he went through a bit of it, but he had to pay the full price of the $75. It's probably like $800 today, right? And so he had to pay that. It's been a few years since then. But we love, we love that we enjoy. God says the cattle are mine on a thousand hills. God owns, he doesn't have lack in heaven. He doesn't have lack for you. When you come to him and connect with him, he says, I own the cattle on a thousand hills. When you're his child, just like the David said, he said that I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging bread. So David, King David said, I've never seen righteous people that serve God forsaken. I've never seen them begging bread. I've never seen them with lack because God takes care of us. Amen. But so lastly, we have to choose life. Choose who we serve today. God says, Choose, it says in Joshua 24, 15, but if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods of your ancestors served before the Euphrates? Or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Isn't that good? Did you catch that? He says, choose you who you will serve. Do you want to serve the gods of the earth, the gods of, the gods of distraction, the gods of not attending to the Lord Jesus Christ? You have a choice of one or two things. He doesn't say pick A, B, C, 3D. No, it's not, it's not deal or no deal with 70 suitcases and you get 10000 5000 1000 2000 dollars. No, it's deal or no deal is one deal or no deal. Jesus is the deal. No deal is hell. And so it's not, a, it's not a thing to scare you, but there will be a fear if you choose the wrong door. So don't wait till tomorrow. You will not know what's going to happen tomorrow. Amen. We don't know what's going to happen the next day. But I can assure you of this when you walk with Jesus and talk with him that he keeps you safe. Amen. Amen. I know that when I was in, in Ireland, I uh, said this before, when I was in Ireland, that we, we were traveling around and uh, we had the Irish Republican Army come back in the 90s and said, hey, we're going to blow up your car. We're going to rip you off. You better get out of Ireland. And so I laughed at him. I was in a bad mood that day. And so I was just like, whatever. I had my friend who's a big, tall evangelist guy. And he started preaching Jesus to him. I wasn't too concerned. We saw our castle and went back over to England. And so took our ferry across. And, uh, you know, but the Lord keeps you safe. When you walk with him, he keeps you safe. There's not destruction that's on you. When you get in his camp, he keeps you safe. You don't have to fear anything. 
I've traveled around the world in crazy places, in crazy circumstances, half the time dumb and out of it, not re realizing what's going on. But God kept me safe, amen, in spite of myself. And I know there's times he kept me safe because the Lord is good to me, amen, he's good to you. And so Jesus said in Matthew 7, 13 through 14, enter, he said, Jesus said, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Wow, few who find it. So Jesus wants us to find the way to him today. So choose the narrow way. What does that mean? It means that there's so many people that are that, that it seems like church is not the answer. It seems like, oh, who are the crazy Christians? Well, let me tell you what. The crazy Christians are the most radical, ragtag, strong in the Lord people. Jesus was the boldest person. He carried his cross. He was beaten openly for you and for me. And he rose again. Thank you, Jesus. Can you say thank you, Jesus? Amen. And so, you know, whether you're seven years old today, anybody that's seven? Malcolm's older than seven, I know that. So I'm older than seven, so we've received Jesus. It doesn't matter the age. It doesn't matter how young or how old. But you have to be bold to accept the, the, what he accepted. Don't wait off another day. If you've walked away from him, then there's all you have to do is say, I'm, I'm going to walk back to you. And he, hold, he holds open his arms wide open. So that's the purpose of the resurrection. So he can come and live in your life. He can empower you to live your life with comfort and peace to walk the right way. To right, walk the right direction. And when you're walking with a team of people, guys need guys that are strong in the Lord today. So you can have wisdom and understanding, direction in life. Women need good women of God. So you can have the care, the love that you need to be bold to live this life in a world that's going to hell in craziness. But Jesus is leading a big charge of people to him. Amen. Let's go ahead and close out in prayer here. I'm going to pray. So let's go ahead and uh, have everybody... Stand up. Amen. I've been sitting for a couple shakes of the lamb's tail. As we say in a, a good Irish saying, that my friend would from Ireland would say this, not an Irish saying. I always love to razz my friends in Ireland with uh, what the true Irish sayings, you know, like top of the morning to you. That's not an Irish saying. He's like, that's why I say it. It's not an Irish saying. Top of the morning, lads. So praise the Lord. Let's go and pray today. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your goodness and faithfulness. We thank you that Jesus is Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're faithful, you're kind, you're loving, you're glorious. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You're coming back soon in a grand and glorious fashion. But, Lord, you've got great work to do for people to walk with you, to not walk away from you. No, there's a plan and a specific person that he's designed for each of you today. He's got a specific plan and a specific purpose for you today. So all you've got to do is say yes to Jesus. So I know that when I was seven, I received the Lord. When I was 10, I was in a service that somebody said that anybody that would publicly declare that Jesus is Lord, that you need to do that because the Lord, if you declare the Lord publicly, he's going to declare the Lord. He's going to, going to declare that you've received me publicly to, to my father in heaven. And so I went up and I prayed that I said, I'm going to want to receive you publicly, Lord Jesus. I want to be bold to say that Jesus is my Lord. You paid the price for me, so I'm going to walk forward and be strong for you today. And so don't wait another minute, just like the guy that we prayed for, that one day he's here, the next day he's gone. That's that close to eternity. You, some, some people can just be going on a vacation, fall off a cruise ship and die. They can go ahead and just walk across the street and die. They could fall over from a heart attack and die. Anything can happen. But with Jesus, we have no fear because we know him. When you know him, there's no fear in him, the Bible says. But perfect love casts out fear. He is the one of perfect love. When we receive the one of perfect love, it's not a, uh, it's not a secret code, but it's, it's the reality of openly receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior. All you've got to do is pray and say yes to him. So if there's anybody that here that, that wants to say yes to him for the first time today, don't delay. Now is the time to say yes. Just raise your hand. Come on up forward. We're going to pray as a whole group to pray to receive Jesus, to pray to say, I turn to you. I walk with you. And so if that's you that need to say yes to him, you can just come on up, make your way on up today. You might say, well, that's unusual to do. That's an unusual thing to do. Well, no, it's not unusual because the Lord, he went forward to say yes for you. Amen. He went forward to say, I'm going to walk with you, walk with you and you're going to walk with me. And so thank you, Lord. Don't wait another second. Because this the, the gate, this is a narrow gate. The door is closing. Yeah. And the Lord doesn't want it. It's not to say that there couldn't be another day. 
but don't let there be another day. There might not be another day for you. Don't wait off until you're nine, 99 years old and you have the last breath to breathe and say, I receive you, and then you die. Don't wait off to the last second because you don't know if you'll have that much time. So hallelujah. I'm going to pray a prayer for everybody today. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we're going to pray a prayer, Father, for those that are online or in person that want to say yes to Jesus. There's those watching online around the world, around this nation. And, Lord God, we need to walk with you. We need to choose you. And so, Lord, just like I did when I was seven years old, we're going to lead people in a prayer today. And if they pray with their whole heart and turn their whole life to you, they can have a new life in Jesus. And so, dear Heavenly Father, you can re repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I need a Savior. I know that you died on the cross for me. You rose from the dead for me. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead, then we'll be saved. And so, Lord, I choose you now. Forgive me of my sins. I choose to walk with you all the days of my life. From this day forward, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. If you pray that prayer for the first time, it says that you are a new creation. It says the angels of heaven are rejoicing that you've chosen and have said yes to him. So don't just pretend it. Don't just go ahead and walk the other way. But now is the day to have a new step forward. Come to church. Read your Bible. Enter in. You don't have to do everything right. Do you read the Bible the wrong way, the right way? No, you start and take a step toward him. I had a little picture Bible when I was a kid. I graduated to a non-picture Bible. And so guess what? There's a couple pictures, and I like pictures, as we had some today. But guess what? God is going to get you moving forward in Him, and it's going to be the best day ever. Hallelujah.